Today, I want to talk about simplifying view models because what exactly is a view model? It is simply a model for the view. Now, that's a simple definition, but sometimes we forget about just how simple view models need to be, and we end up making them unnecessarily complex. So, for example, we might end up using callback commands and then defining all the methods for our application's functionality in the view model, but we really do not need to be doing this, and it really raises three issues. The first issue, and the most blatant issue, is that it's a view model, so it's a model for the view, but our view doesn't really need to know about these method implementations that our commands are going to use. All the view needs is a command that it can execute. It doesn't need to know what it's going to execute when it calls the command. The second issue is that by defining these methods inside of our view model, it really limits our flexibility. So for example, what if I wanted the calculate price button to not actually do anything and just say, oh, this store is closed, or we don't sell this item anymore. I wouldn't be able to change any of that functionality without going into my view model and actually changing this method. And the third and final issue I can think of is the complexity and size of the view model. So by having all of these methods for our commands defined inside of the view model, our view model gets pretty big. And this is a very small example, but imagine you have many commands, then your view model could be hundreds of lines. And that doesn't really sound much like a view model. So those are my three big concerns. Now keep in mind, these are just my opinions from previous experience building MVVM applications. And I still think there are definitely some scenarios where using a callback command and defining a method in your view model might be okay. But for the most part, what I'm about to demonstrate is usually how I approach MVVM applications. So let's first get into our demo. So this is very similar to the demo I used in my class commands video, and we're actually gonna be building on a lot of the concepts in that video too. So all I have is this by view, and the view model for this is my by view model. So you can select an item in this dropdown, so something like an apple, enter a quantity, you can calculate the price for three apples to $1.47, and then you can buy three apples. You can also choose an item that doesn't exist, and it'll give an error message for this item. So I'm using callback commands here, and these callback commands point to methods within my view model. So I don't want all these methods to find in here because my view doesn't need these methods, and a view model is a model for the view. I'd like to reduce the size and complexity of my view model, I think that would be nice. And yeah, those things would be nice, but the application works, who the heck cares? I don't need to change anything. Until now. So I've just been told I need to update this application so that if the application is started on an odd minute, such as 705, then everything's gonna work exactly how we have it right now, so you can calculate the price, buy items, but if it started on an even minute, like 706, then trying to calculate the price is going to fail and just put out an error message that we can't calculate the price because the item doesn't exist. And same thing with trying to buy an item, it'll say something like the item can no longer be bought. So I need to support both of these scenarios, and that raises the third issue that we discussed, which is limited flexibility. So since we have all these methods defined in here, the only way we could change the functionality of this view model would be to actually change the method implementations, but we also can't do that because we have to support both scenarios where calculating and buying the item works and where it doesn't work because something like the store is closed. So let's finally begin simplifying this view model. So the first thing we're going to do is make this view model a model for the view and reduce the view model's size and complexity, and to do that we're going to use class commands. So I already have a base command defined can execute, can be overridden by derived classes, and derived classes will implement execute. So our first command is going to be a class for the calculate price command. And of course, this will inherit from base command, and we will implement that abstract class. So now all we have to do is execute something inside of this command. Now what are we going to execute? Quite simply, we are going to execute the calculate price logic. So let's just copy all of this, or in fact cut everything, from this calculate price method in the view model and move it into our calculate price command. And there we go, let's import what we can, which is just this exception that I catch. And we have a bunch of errors, and that is because we're no longer within our view model, so we can't access any of these properties or methods on the view model. So in order to access them, we are gonna need a reference to our view model inside of this command. So let's go ahead and get one of those. So we'll create a field for the by view model just call it view model. And while we're defining fields, we're also going to need a price service. 
So let's get a price service in here. We need that to get the total price of the selected item. And we'll just call that price service. So let's generate a constructor for that. And now that we have a reference to our view model, we can call the methods on the view model. So clearing the messages, which I think is a private method. Let's go ahead and make this public. And then we can access the properties on our view model. And I also need logic to calculate the total price. So we can grab that from the view model. We're just going to copy it and just paste that in here. So total price is price times quantity. A quantity is also on the view model. So let's qualify that. And same with item name that we pass into the get price method. All right, so we have our calculate price command. All of that logic has been moved into our command and out of our buy view model. So before we continue, let's go ahead and create a buy command as well. So the buy command, and same thing, we're going to extend base command, implement that class, go into our buy view model, cut all the buy method logic out, put it into our command. And actually, same thing as the calculate price command, we're going to need our view model and our price service in here. So I'm actually just going to copy all of that from the calculate price command and move it into my buy command. Let's go ahead and import everything, fix our constructor name real quick. And this total price calculation, we have that in our calculate price command. So I'm just going to copy this and move it in there. Of course, we're getting a little bit of duplication here. We could move all of this logic into some other service that would do this full total price calculation for us in order to reduce this duplication. But we're not going to worry about that right now, just focusing on thinning the view model. And let's go ahead and qualify all of these methods and properties with our buy view model. And let's import this exception. All right, so all of our logic has been moved to commands. So now in our buy view model, we no longer need a buy method or a calculate price method or a get total price method. And there we go, our view model is extremely simple other than this clear messages method, which I think is okay because all it really does is manipulate properties that are used by the view model anyways. So really the only time I ever have methods on a view model is whenever it does something like this where it just manipulates some kind of combination of properties on the view model. So now we're no longer going to be using callback command because our methods aren't in the view model. Instead, we're going to be using our calculate price command and our buy command. And these take a buy view model and a price service. So we can just pass those in. So the price service already getting that through the constructor. And same thing, calculate price command, pass in this view model instance and the price service. Now also, our price service is just getting passed directly into these commands. So we don't really need a field for it anymore because it's not used anywhere else in the view model. So we can go ahead and delete that field. Actually, I do want to point out, let me just undo a bunch of stuff. So our callback commands took callbacks for can execute. And our callback command used this func to tell the UI if the button binded to this command could execute or not. But with our class commands, we haven't implemented that. So we should implement that. And to do that, we are going to override can execute. And we can execute if our view model can calculate the price. Now part of I command, we have to tell the UI when the value of can execute changes. As we can see in our base command, there's an event for can execute changed. So we do need to raise that whenever can calculate price changes. And we can do that by subscribing to property changed on the view model. And if the name of the property that changes is the name of the can calculate price property, then we will raise on can execute changed. And we're going to copy this and do the same thing in the buy command, except this time the property we're depending on is is valid buy. So let's override can execute again. And we can execute if is valid buy is true. So there we go, we have our class commands implemented and we're using them in the view model. Oh, and real quick, I forgot to subscribe to property change on my view model in the buy command. But anyways, our view model and view still works exactly the same. We're still executing our logic, except it's all been moved to commands. So our view model fits the definition of being a model for the view a lot better and we've reduced its size and complexity as well. But what about flexibility? Well, we actually still don't have flexibility because we're just instantiating these commands here. So if I want to change this command so that I can support the use case where the store is closed and you can't calculate a price or buy an item, I'm not going to be able to do it unless I actually change the commands that I instantiate. But I can't just change them because I need to support these commands and the command for the store being closed at the same time. 
And the solution to that, I just know everyone is going to love, it is a factory. So we're going to need a factory that we can pass into the ByView model to create these commands. And then we can pass in a different factory to create different commands. But of course, that would mean every single command is going to need some kind of factory to go with it. So we'd need a calculate price command factory and a buy command factory. And then we just have factory explosion. And nobody likes factory explosion. Especially since these factories aren't going to be really doing anything complex anyways. All the factories would really need to do is take in this view model instance and create our command. So that being said, this sounds like a really good use case for delegates. And that is exactly what we're going to do. I just love delegates. So let's create a new item here. And this is going to be create command. And we did create this as a class, but it's not actually going to be a class. It's just going to be a delegate that's going to return an I command and is going to be called create command. And we're going to create a command for some kind of view model. So we're going to have that as a generic so we can use this delegate in any kind of view model, not just a by view model. And we will take that view model as a parameter to this delegate. So if you're not familiar with delegates, just a quick rundown. This is basically just the definition of some kind of method. So create command will represent a method that takes in a view model, or in this case it could be any type, but for our usage it's going to be a view model, and will return an I command. And let's see how we can use this. So back in our buy view model, in fact we don't even care about the price service anymore, we're not going to be passing that in. All the buy view model will need is a create command, and we're creating command for the buy view model. And this will represent a function to create the calculate price command. And we're going to need another create command for the buy view model to create a buy command. And now, instead of just instantiating these commands here, where we lose flexibility, we can't instantiate any other type of command, we can just use our delegates, which again are just methods, and just call those methods and pass in this view model instance. And same thing for the buy command and pass in this instance. And now we have ultimate flexibility. So in my app.xaml.cs, this is where I actually set up my view model, and now we need to provide it with two create commands. So my requirement was, if the application is started on an odd minute, so let's get that current minute, which would be date time now dot minute, and if the current minute is odd, then we're gonna set up a create command for our buy view model, and this will be the create calculate price command. So this will eventually get passed into our view model. And this needs to represent a method. And this method is going to take in a view model. And it's going to return just our regular calculate price command. And we can pass in the view model that eventually gets passed into our delegate and our price service. And then same thing for a create buy command, except we're going to instantiate a new buy command. And I'm actually going to have to move these outside of this if statement so I can use them in my buy view model. And then we pass those delegates into the buy view model. So the create calculate price command and the create buy command. So if the application was started on an odd minute, we're going to have the regular functionality. But if it was started on an even minute, then of course we're going to have a different command. So let's create a command for that. So this will be the store close command. And just implement base command. And we'll still have to get our view model in here. So the buy view model, generate a constructor for that. And when we execute this command, we will just set the view model error message to the store is currently closed. And now we can use that command as our create command delegate. So actually, I'm going to set up a variable for that command right here. So create store close command. So it takes in a view model and returns a new store close command, passing in the view model. And now we'll use the create store close command as the value for the create calculate price command and the value for the create buy command. And there we go. So it is 738 right now. And it just turned 739. I'm not sure if this is actually going to work. Dang it, so it still works. So I'm going to have to wait another minute. Actually, I'll just hard code the minute. Make that 10 so that we get to these commands. And here we go. So our buttons are enabled by default because we didn't implement any of that can execute logic in the store close command. So I will just click buy, and there we go, the store is currently closed. So we have achieved our use case of supporting both scenarios. So if the application was started on an odd minute, then everything works fine. But if it was an even minute, 
then the story is closed. And to accomplish this, we had to take our view model and move our callback command methods into class commands, which led our view model to coincide more with the definition of a view model being a model for the view as it is. It obviously increased our view model's flexibility because we can set up any kind of command we want. And it also reduced the size and complexity of our view model because we no longer have all these methods in here. And the main reason we got all this to work is because we moved all of our commands to classes and we also set up this create command delicate so we can create and use any kind of command in our view model. So there might actually be a few downsides of using class commands over something like a delegate or callback command. And I discussed that more in my class commands video. So I'll leave a link to that. There's also some more benefits that I discussed in that video as well. Another thing that is a bit weird is the way we instantiate the by view model. So both of these parameters are just create commands. So it's completely valid to swap these around. And now my calculate price command is actually going to be the buy command and my buy command is going to be the calculate price command and syntactically this is legal but logically that just makes no sense and lastly I will admit that if your view model isn't really that big and you don't need the flexibility of creating different commands for your view model then there's really nothing wrong with just using a callback command and having a method in your view model there is no law that says you can't do that and I definitely wouldn't recommend just going and refactoring and potentially breaking a bunch of code if you don't need that flexibility anyways. But this is just something to consider and something that I've grown to enjoy a lot. So I did just want to demonstrate it and put it out there. Anyways, that is where we're going to wrap up. We now have a simple view model. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.